Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary. Okay, we give God praise again for being able to come into your space to minister a now word. Yes, the scripture says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, but then it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we found out uh, that God set it up for years <laughs> before this time. He set it up so that there is a, a place where you can Hear the word of God so you can build your faith. We could build our faith and not just hear the word of God, but where it is now in our language, uh, English, whatever, Spanish, whatever, that whoever wants to hear the word of God can hear it. Uh, there's a, a, a prophet, Amos, who prophesied in Amos chapter 8, that there'll come a time when there's a famine for the word of God, but we give God praise. Not so in this season, unless you have decided you don't want to hear what God has to say. And of course, you are being famished. Uh, you are being dehydrated because you are totally confused about what's happening. But if you want to hear the word of God, the word of God is coming through so many different media. Yes, and right now you are receiving it by the medium that you are tuned into. Amen? But we, we know that the word heard and received, then believed and acted upon is the word that makes the difference. But the word heard and shunned, doubted, criticized, ripped apart, torn up, even though it carries potency. If I choose not to follow it, then I become a victim of whatever it was going to buffer me and cushion me from, or where it would lead me into something fresh and something new. We have decided, we are Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, the people with a passion for the presence, the person and character of God, we have decided that we are going to look for the Word of God on every matter. And not only that, we live by it, but there's another aspect of the Word of God. Once it works for you, it works for me. I'm now obligated to do what? Testify about it. And the word testify uh, has as one of its meaning to find avenues to deliver it. And this is one of the avenues that's available. That's why you can receive a no word from God right now. And we thank God that he has released a prophetic mantle upon us so you could hear from him the no word and declare it. And that's why no faith her, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But this no faith comes from what? Hearing the word of God. And when you were younger, you know, your mother will tell you, uh, I hope you heard what I said. Yes, mommy, I heard. But when she comes and she doesn't see action commensurate with what she said, which you verified that you heard, she would say, but I thought you said you heard what I said. 
Yes, mommy. How you haven't done it as yet? And, and, and mommy, when uh, she said, when I speak to you, you must hear. And of course, she would have our air on fire. Yeah, and that which you did not do uh, according to the instruction and the time frame that she expected. No, you do it in quick time, like a jet propulsion engine in, in, in a plane. You take off because your ears are on fire. We don't want God to ring our ears, right? No, we don't want God to ring our ears. And that's why uh, um, following uh, what, what uh, Isaiah said, in Isaiah chapter chapter 2, uh, in the Old Testament, of course, that in the last days, which is our times, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the other mountains. And we have, we have articulated it so many times, ventilated so many times concerning these mountains. And, and uh, by now, most people would, would realize all the, those mountains that have been touted as being so great, the politics and the education, yes, sports and entertainment, religion and the media, economics and family got a good shaking. Is a shaking, it's a shaking that's really bringing things to reality that the educationists, the, 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 the bright boys of the world can find nothing resembling what they, they thought they knew to deal with the present crisis. And we see many spin-offs, many spin-offs, riots here and riots there and, and all types of um, governments shaking here and shaking there. And it's just a mess. But the God that we serve, he says, every other mountain, the people uh, that are the movers and shakers there, and, and uh, a pun is intended on shakers because they're shaking too, will come up to the house of the Lord. We'll look up to the house of the Lord. And we say the house of the Lord has a book. And the book is the Bible. And in the Bible, we've been checking in, in Ephesians, where God is saying, I want to bring the world to its basic elements. And that is back to family, where the, the, the sinews of right and wrong and the sinews of obedience and respect and the sinews of the, the values the value system, the good morning, the good evening, the honesty, yes, and 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 the sobriety and and the, the living by demonstration, teaching by demonstration as opposed to legislation of the 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 new generation that's coming up by the older one, older generation that has been experienced. He said, that's why I brought you back. And and we, we looked at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, and we found that children have been uh, uh, not just advised, ordered, because we said, children, come on. Children, listen to me. Obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and your mother. Then we found out that fathers, and fathers here stands for, stand for parents, uh, but he's addressing the male parents mainly because since in the Apostle Paul's days, men were missing. Men were missing from their position of authority and responsibility and as such the children were growing disobedient, growing wayward. Since in those days, that is how many, nearly 2,000 years ago. And we think we are so modern, we are so, we, we are so advanced beyond them. We have electricity, we have aeroplanes, we have spacecrafts, we have computers and all of that. But I found out that the human being has not really changed. He has established a host of systems and new inventions and all of that, and yet, he remains the same. The same Bible that people don't like tells the story of the human being in the earth. And once 
a man's ways. Please, God, God releases his grace. When a man's ways don't please God, then the, we suffer the consequences thereof. And so he says to the men, come on, man, you father the child, demonstrate what manhood is, what real men do. So your son and your daughter will do what? Will be trained thereby. But what has happened? The mothers have been left. The women have been left. And we saw that a few weeks ago in Trinidad and Tobago. Oh my word. How many young men. And I mean, they look strong and robust. What did they do? They came down the streets and they caused mayhem. They, I mean, set tires burning. We looked in the United States. Yes, it was a legitimate cause. The young man had been, been um, slain at the, at the uh, hands of policemen who were very inconsiderate. And in some states, they're still marching after nearly six, seven weeks, burning and, and looting and, and all of that. Where were the fathers? Where are the fathers? In fact, some of the guys who were marching, they are fathers. Yeah. But the Bible says, you see, from the mountain of the house of the Lord, we are looking at the book of instructions. And fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath. Don't encourage them by way of the, the, the way you are what? By you are reneging on your promise to help raise the children because from the moment you impregnate a woman without signing a piece of paper you are saying gentlemen i will work with you to raise this child and the family then we we, we came to the employees employees and it says here um servants well I, i'm reading here from the king james servants be obedient to them that are your masters and masters here talk about your employers and i know some people with oh, servant me nobody servant but once you're working for the government you are called a what civil servant a civil servant and sometimes we say my god some civil servants are neither servants nor are they civil sometimes you just don't want to go into any government department to get your your papers fixed or to get your papers uh, to collect your birth certificate or, or whatever it may be pay your taxes there's a rough and gruff and sometimes they're neither rough nor gruff but they are inconsiderate indifferent you will be standing there and they having a good uh, conversation going on totally flouting the rules that were given or all the rules that they signed up for yes lunch will be one hour the supervisor so good yeah, and and, and um, how, how you call it cooperative so, okay uh, how many we have 10 of us here all of us can't go out at the same time why not let us go by the twos beginning from 11 o'clock that by one o'clock all of us will be back in each person take an hour mm -hmm. and what happens some people are missing in action until three o'clock and when they come at three they have to leave at half past three because they have to pick up the children so productivity is way down well the bible caters for that so you start off with the children then the parents now those who will go out to work is a on the job, follow the rules. And then he comes and addresses those who are the bosses, quote unquote, allow me to use that term, the bosses, the various levels of, of authority, the hierarchy of authority. He says, he says, come on, come on, come on. I want you to treat your workers with dignity. I want you to hear what he says. And he masters, also using the word masters, 
in, in those days, again, I have to uh, explain it. The King James people say masters and some other translations when it comes to servants, they say slaves, but that was the economy and the social construct at that time. In all, but the essence of it is the same today. There are those who are bosses and those of us who are what? Workers. Some are owners of business, others are employees. And I have to know my role. So he says, and you, owners of business, you supervisors, and, and so on and so on, do the same to them, just as you want the people to respect you, so must you respect the people who work with you. And that is everywhere. That's at every level. Because one of the things we have found out, my God, even in uh, uh, churches that have offices, yes, and have people from the church working there. Because people are people and behave like people unless people allow Holy Spirit to help them govern themselves. Even in a church setting, you have confusion. You have those who are the supervisors, those who are the decision makers coming down on those who are supposed to carry out instructions. And I'm telling you, and of course, those who carry out the instructions, who are supposed to carry out the instructions, of course, the human being is like a, a bucking horse whenever there is this weight being put on you. Yeah, 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 that's the truth. Church or no church, save or no save. Unless we become spirit controlled and we learn self governance. He said, Ye masters, do the same things for them, treat them right, forbearing, threatening, stop threatening them. More fire, you know. Huh. Yeah, if it, I may mean, not fire you, but. I'll reduce your salary, you know. Knowing that your master, God, and, and, and we send out this as an as a, uh, um, advisory to all who own businesses, had it not been for God, as it had it not been for God, you would not have been able to get the capital, to, to get the real estate, to set up your business and to continue, especially through this season. But it is God that has given you the idea and given you the grace. I want you to catch that. And that's why you need to treat people like how God will treat them. And the Bible caters for that. He masters do the same thing unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Rather, is there no respect of persons with him? Neither, sorry, there's no respect of persons with him. In other words, when the COVID struck, everybody was told, come home, except for emergency workers. Everybody was told, come home. Shut your business down. Close up your shop. Close the gym. Close the barber shop. Why? Because God says, I want the family back home. And I want you to learn how to treat one another right. How to treat people right. So when the economy, the nation begins to open up again, you go back out there with the right sinews the values, with, with the right uh, um, respect for people, with the understanding that if you're a boss, <laughs> listen, you own a business, the workers 
are the movers and shakers in that business. You are the visionary that gives you the value <laughs> at the top of the pyramid of values, right? That you, you got the dream. You are the one that uh, set the structure and, and all of that. But hey, you can't do all the work, sir, ma'am. You are the one that must now be like the orchestra director. Listen, the orchestra director is the visionary of the symphony. He knows exactly every note, every tune, but he cannot play both the clarinet and the drums, nor can he go and play the keyboard at the same time. But he knows it in his head. So he knows exactly when to bring in this one and that one. And when he says, all together now, and we sit there and enjoy the symphony. Well, that's how God is saying, what God is saying. Um, I brought mankind back into the rehearsal hall. I brought you back to backstage to reorganize yourself. Yes. And that's what Ezekiel had to prophesy. He prophesied to the bones. And as he prophesied to the bones, bone found bone, every crab found its hole and to i mean in the early days you could not even go across by the neighbor you remember that how soon we forget couldn't even go across by the neighbor and have a little a little party and so on greet the neighbor they say stay home we don't want any community spread and some people who, who felt claustrophobic, oh my gosh, that was sickening. And we had many cases where people flouted the, the rules. And what happened? Motor car accident. Young people dying because they, they felt claustrophobic. I must party, I must fail, I was party. Mm -hmm. And of course, you would understand that when the rules are set, they are for our what? They are for our safety. Yeah. And it, it's expected now that the, that the society has opened up. Workspace is supposed to be more congenial. Yes, the place is supposed to have uh, that welcoming type of uh, uh, atmosphere where I'm willing to get up in the morning and prepare for work. And, and especially on a Sunday night, <laughs> those who, who go to work on a Monday, you, you get up and you prepare clothes and so on. And you, you, you are singing as you are uh, uh, doing your, your you're ironing your clothes and whatever, because you're going to be at work tomorrow and you'll be producing, oh my God. But you have a place where your boss, real bossy, what happens? You're, you're ironing the clothes and you're, you're depressed and you say, no, Lord, to go back to work again. You have some co-workers who are what we say in Trinidad and Tobago, commissive. And you're ironing and say, oh, Lord, I can't take, I hope, I hope they may come to work tomorrow. Now, boy, oh, gosh, I can't take that now. Isn't God awesome? In a short space in the scripture, from verse 1 to verse 9 of chapter 6 of Ephesians, God covers the whole gamut of what society is consisting of. He says, but for society to function the way it's supposed to, I have brought society back into the womb called the family. And like the mother does with that child on the inside, that fetus on the inside, everything she eats, he or she, that child, gets the nutrition. Every emotion that she feels, that child gets it. It is said that there are 72,000 nerves attached to the child attached to the mother that umbilical cord 
is a bundle of nerves. And as though those nerves take up signal from every part of that mother's being. And that is why, that is why so many young men and young women are about the place, I mean, like, as they say, headless chicken, blind uh, 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 dogs going about the place, don't know where to go. Why? Because when mommy got pregnant, and and and, and let me rub it in when daddy got her pregnant because she can't get pregnant from sneezing. When daddy got her pregnant and she opened her mouth and said, Hey, honey, I'm pregnant. And his first question cast doubt on her faithfulness by saying, What? Huh? For who? From the time he said that, he began what? He began a roller coaster process by which that little baby on the inside began to be bombarded by negativity. Because immediately, mommy realized she was duped. Mommy realized she had bought a bag of air from a slick salesman. And now she's left to rule a yes that she, and and the consent she gave not only mommy felt it the little baby felt it and continues to feel it if there is no change and the result is what we saw a few weeks ago young strong men and young women all over the streets but i am a firm believer that god will bring forth his plan the family is back. And coming out of the womb of the family will be well-ordered young men and young women and employees and employers, bosses and workers in the name of Jesus. So, I'm a positive event Duncan. Until we meet again, on behalf of my wife and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center the house of champions, we declare to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You're a good idea. Because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. See you the next time. God bless you. This is Pastor Donald Duncan of The Body Church, and I'm excited to share with you my brand new book, The Mystery of Time, Understanding the Time and Season You Are In. God has fit time into the continuum of eternity in such a way that it governs the human experience. In this, my seventh book, I look from seven different perspectives at the age-old question, what is time? I provide scriptural best practices for discerning God's timing and share effective tools for understanding the end times. Most importantly, I reveal through the life of Jesus the value of living according to God's schedule and tapping into the wisdom of the Holy Spirit for a revelation of the future. Pick up your copy today. You won't regret it. Available now at Amazon.com reach your goals through jesus christ this has been it's your date with destiny a production of divine destiny media ministry until next time you began life as a winner don't live life as a victim or die as a loser for when god made you he had destiny on his mind